Praise God, church. I welcome each and every one of you to the house of God. And, uh, and we, I just want to, you know, uh, greet Jeff and also for the first time. Thank you for coming, being part of our service. And everyone who's watching online, if you're watching for the first time, thank you for being part of our service. And today's uh, service will be a blessing to you. Um, uh, today, I just want to talk about the continuation of what I spoke about last week, right? And last week we spoke about the fruit of righteousness. Man, if you are a Christian and if you have Christ in you, the evidence of you being in Christ has to come out. The fruit of righteousness. Man, you being righteous and living in righteousness shouldn't just be like somewhere inside, I'm enjoying it. No. You experiencing Christ should ooze out of you. Not something that you follow, not something to do a to-do list, but if you truly are submitted to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will just ooze out of you. You will automatically love, you will automatically serve, you will automatically greet with joy and you don't have to seek for that joy, the joy is in you. And something I want you to know church, that you are not servants, you are the children of the living God. And as children of the living God, He's made us co-labor, co-heirs with Christ. And our duty as co-heirs, as partners of Jesus, is to reflect the kingdom of God to this earth. And I love how it says in Luke 19.10, it says the Son of Man that has come to seek and save that which was lost. Not who, He's taking us back to a place where Adam and Eve did not lack anything. He's trying to bring us back and connect us to the kingdom. And while the creation is earnestly waiting for the sons of God, God to be manifested, and we are the children of God, church, say, I am the child of God. Shake your neighbor up and say, I am the child of God. And when I say shake him up, shake him up. Praise God. And I love how it says in 1 John 3, 8, it says, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the evil one, the devil, the enemy. Church, we have to allow God to manifest through us to destroy the work of the evil in our world. And it has to happen only if you allow Christ and the righteousness of God to reflect and be manifested out of you, church. In our Matthew 6, 33, you should know this by heart. Man, if I ask anybody, any child, Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. The whole idea of God is like, hey, I just want my children to be connected to the source, not the resource, the source. The problem with us is we're running to the next conference, the next fasting prayer, the next uh, prophet, or the next, I don't know, the next person who could just, oh, I need something, I'm dying, I'm dry, I need something, I'm running to all the wrong places. And God is saying, the source is the kingdom. All you got to do, you want to hear it? You want to hear it? Go to your closets. Sit down in prayer. Go directly to the Father and say, Abba, Father. That's it. He is the source. Sometimes in our generation, I know some of us, we love getting, you know, to pray for you and uh, pray with you. But let me tell you, church, we are not gods. We're just a reflection of His image. And church, he wants you to be that reflection of his image. You know, if a bunch of us started doing that in our church, that if we could be that reflection of his image, that we could be the reflection of Christ, you will be going around destroying every dirty work of the enemy. And we are seeing it in our country. Even we are seeing it with the abortion law. Man, praise God. I only see two sides in this. Killing babies and not killing babies. God stands for righteousness, not killing. Man, we got to pray that our country starts becoming a place 
where our school starts praying, where our Congress and Constitution has prayer in their room. And it has to start with us, church. If we do not manifest God's kingdom, then who will? In 2 Peter 2, 9, it says, but you are a chosen generation. Look to your neighbor and say, chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Man, I love it that you may proclaim the praises of him. Church, how do you proclaim the praises of him? Through you, when people see you, you're proclaiming your father because you're, you're the image of your father. When people see you, you know, you know how in Malayalam we say, ah, when up in the morning. Man, I am my father's son. I am reflecting the image of Jesus. His joy, his peace, his gladness, his healing. I am my father's and he is mine. Church, you know what, you, you know why why Paul put that royal priesthood in there? I'll tell you why he put the royal priesthood in there. Because back in the day, what, what would the high priest do? The high priest would once a year take the sins of Israel, go to the Lord, and he would, he would represent the people of Israel to God. But guess what? God would talk to the priest, and the priest would come out of that talking with God, and he would represent the mighty God to the children of Israel. You know why God called you royal priest? Because it's still happening. That you are royal priesthood to represent a kingdom to the rest of the dying world. You are called to magnify and manifest a kingdom that nobody else will. Because you are chosen. You are a royal priesthood church. Oh man, I love this word. Oh, thank you Jesus for this word. We are representing God to humanity, church. Joshua in his college is representing God to, his, to the humanity around him. When in your workplaces, George By is representing God to the people around him. Man, everywhere we go, we got to manifest the kingdom of God, church. You know, when I was in college, I thought, I'd, I, thought I was the most well-dressed guy. Not everybody thought that. According to me, I was like, wow, I'm the most well-dressed. I dress so well. Uh, and everybody around me thought I did not. You know, I would wear uh, pants that were so baggy that I would clean off the floors of the streets. Right? And until I met Jaren. If you see me good-looking, it's because of her. Right? All credit goes to her. But here's the thing, church. This is what self-righteousness is like. We wear... Only to us, we think we look good. But everybody around you is like, oh. I wish somebody could tell him. That is what self-righteousness is like. We think we are the well best dressed. But the Lord is, man, if you could take your old garments, I would give you a garment of righteousness. I would give you a garment that, man, nobody can replace. I would give you a garment that you would look so good in. How many of us have that one t-shirt we never throw away though? It might have a ton of holes. Right. Thank you, self-righteous people. That one t-shirt. You know, you know those kids that have that baby blanket they walk around with? What do they do that for? Comfort. They want to feel value. And the problem is self-righteousness clothes is the same. We wear it for comfort that we, we feel good about ourselves. We wear it so that we, we value ourselves. Oh man, I'm good. I'm good. And the Lord is, man, everybody around you is disgusted. It smells nasty. You haven't washed it in years. And there are holes there. It's, it's so good. It's, it's, man, the problem is self-righteousness will take you to a place where you will hold on for value, comfort, that you seek from something that is dying. But the Lord is saying, man, if I clothe you in my righteousness, you are valued by the Father in heaven. You are comforted by the Father in heaven. You see the difference between source and resource church? That we are not seeking for people's value and comfort. We are not seeking for approval. We just need, Father, I'm approved by you. That's it. That's it. 
Man, I'm telling you, if you understood the identity that you have in Christ, that right standing you have with Christ, you wouldn't try to go pleasing people and doing stuff. Man, all you got to do is, man, you will automatically start speaking life into people. You want to bless them. Let's, my first point is new clothes. And that's the only point. And today is my last class for living in righteousness. Isaiah 61.1. You ready, church? This is what new clothes should look like. If you're in Christ, this is what you're called to do. Isaiah 61.1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons of those who were bound, to those who were bound. Church, this is what you look like. Your new clothes, your call to set captives free. Your, your call to open blind eyes. Your identity, your clothes. Man, if you ever want to copy somebody, look at what Jesus did. You want to see the Father? You want to see God? Look what Jesus did. I want you to go to Hebrews 1, 2 to 3, and it says, Has in these last days spoken to, to us by his son, that's Jesus, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he has made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And this is Jesus for us, guys. And in 8 it says, But to the Son he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. Did you catch that, church? A scepter of your righteousness is what? A scepter of your kingdom. What does a scepter signify, church? That authority. That ruling position. Why does he say the scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom? Church, if you walked in authority and knowing your right standing with God, God is saying, man, you are an anointing to his kingdom. You are an authority figure of his kingdom. He's saying each church, each member of my body is a scepter to my kingdom. Think about it. You are the scepter to his kingdom. Man, if you walk righteously in a fallen world, if you are the salt and light, if you manifest Christ, God is saying my scepters, that you have the authority and power, that you can set captives free, open blind eyes, Heal the sick, but that comes with a right standing before the Father. The scepter of righteousness, church. I want to go back to Isaiah 61, church. Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. It says, the spirit of the Lord, God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Church, how many of us are doing this in church? How many of us are healing the brokenhearted in our church? You know what we're good at? We put salt to the wound. If somebody's hurting, I challenge us. I'm not here to ask you to lift hands. Introspect yourself. What have, who have I healed who are brokenhearted in our church this week? Where have I spoken life? And build somebody. It's so easy. Man, when somebody, one brother or sister is going through a hard time, it's so easy to talk against them. My question, church, is who in my church is manifesting God by healing broken hearts? And we are called to proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of prison to those who are bound. Church, who is bound in our church? Aren't we called to manifest the kingdom? Because this is what Jesus did. This is what Jesus did on earth. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. You know what is the vengeance of our Lord? How many of you are angry? That our brothers and sisters are going through tribulation 
and we are here. Nobody I see in my church is angry at the devil. You know what the Lord, God hates inquity and sin. God hates the devil. I want my church to be in anger against the evil one and fight. Do not give him ground. You know, when the devil attacks me, I'm not kidding. I've told this to the kids I disciple. You know, when the devil is attacking me, I laugh on his face. I'm like, you coming against me? You know who my father is? He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. I am covered on his blood. I have the Holy Spirit. I have the fruit of the spirit. I have the armors, armor of God. I have the word of God. I have his blood. You will not touch my family. How many of us are in vengeance? The, the vengeance of the Lord against that enemy. Because our church is going to a place where we are. Oh, uh, what to do, do, brother? I'm just going through a hard time. No, God never asked you to go through a hard time. God never asked. God said you will have trials and tribulations. He did not. He, he, he said that, but he also said you are more than conquerors in Christ. I don't see no conquering. I don't see no anger against that evil one. I, I want to keep going, church. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. And that's what Jesus does, does for us. The oil of joy for mourning. This is why he said new clothes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called, did you catch that church? Trees of righteousness. You know why? Trees, because trees are unmovable. The roots go so deep. And church, I want, you be the, I want you guys to be the trees of righteousness. That you are unmoved. This is my command the Lord has given to set captives free. To heal broken heart. To open the eyes of the blind. Church, I want you to stand as trees of righteousness. And you know what else trees does, church? They will have flowers and seeds and it will drop. And another plant is grown and it will grow into a tree. Now watch this. Go to the next, next line. What does it say? The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Remember last week, church, when I told you we, the entire world is looking at us, the way we behave, what we do, when in spite of having Christ, we are planting seeds. What are we planting? Unrighteousness, cuss words, bitterness, unforgiveness. Church, we are called to be trees of righteousness that plans out of God. That's what I said. We are co-heirs and co-labors with Christ. If you are partners with Jesus, we are called to be partners in his mission. That I am supposed to go out in the world and plant and whose job is for that seed to grow, church? Whose job is it? The Holy Spirit. We are called to just plant. Put those seeds. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Let me ask you, church. How many of you believe in this word? If anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. You know why I'm asking you, church? Because if anyone is in Christ as a new creation, then how come somebody cuts, off, cuts us off in traffic, the first word that pops in our head, I don't want to vocal it. Or what about when our siblings make us angry? Or what about things, the Bible says if you're a new creation, the old is gone. What does that even mean? Then how come when you're a new creation, you still have the same body? If I was... If I was fat before, I'm still fat. If I, was, if I was skinny before, I'm still skinny. What does this passage mean? If I am a new creation, the old is gone, the new has come. I'm going to break it down, church. In 1 Thessalonians, all right? Don't have to take it. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. The Bible talks about three things. 
I want you to pay attention to me. The body, the soul, the spirit. Okay? The body, come on, say with me, church. Body, the soul, the spirit. All right? Now, before you were, before you ever accepted Jesus, you were disconnected with God and you had a dead spirit. Everybody sees this black? Okay, you had a dead spirit. So if anybody looked at you, you have a brain, you have a face, you have a heart, but you have a black, dark spirit. Jesus, when he said, when I have come, I have removed the old, thrown it so far. I don't want to throw it at pastor. Throw it so far that nobody can see it no more. And he's given us what? A new spirit. A new spirit. That the old is actually gone. It's dead. So when Jesus looks at you, what does he see? Righteousness. Now watch this church. Watch this. Although I have an old, I mean the new spirit. So what does the Bible talk about? The three things. Body, soul, and spirit. In the Bible, body is soma in the Greek. The soul is the psyche. And the spirit is pneuma. Right? You have the new spirit, but your, your mind and your heart, the mind, will, and emotion is still part of this earth. That is why you fall sick. That is why you're aging because the Lord has just redeemed the spirit. Now watch this. That is why you still think dirty thoughts because it's still part of this world. But watch this. I want you to go, go to Ephesians. It says, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their minds. He doesn't say in the futility of the spirit. He says, you got to change the way you think. And I'll, I'll come to that church. All right. I want you to keep uh, in 22. What does it say? It says that you put off concerning your former conduct. It is behavior. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your what? Mind. Church, you know how to walk in the renewing of your mind? Allowing the spirit to take over your thoughts and your body. How do you think healing happens? Because when the spirit of the Lord is in you and you say, God, take over, the spirit of the Lord comes out of you and touches the part which needs healing and you're healed. The problem with our church today, watch this, the problem with our church today is when we get mad and when we get healing or when we are sick, we divide, we, we do not allow the spirit to manifest. We are blocking the spirit from from literally getting into our minds. That is why the word of God influencing our mind is very important. You see what Paul says. I want you to be renewed in your mind. Renewed in your character. Not the spirit. The spirit is Jesus. It's whole. It's complete. It has to take over. I'm telling you remove that barrier. And allow the spirit of God just to take over. And you will start experiencing newness of mind. And you will start experiencing healing. The problem is we separate. We do not allow the Holy Spirit to enter into our mind or into our body. When Pastor Abhi Maman prays over somebody, how do you think healing translates? Because the Spirit of God is in him. It comes out of his body and the power of God moves out of his hand into, the, into that body. But guess what? If you do not have that Holy Spirit, it's a temporary healing. You know why God says your body will be healed, but your eternal soul will not reach the kingdom of God. That is why it's important to be completely Jesus from the inside out. You can walk in healing, but never know God. Because we have pastors that pray and pray and pray over you. But you want to experience the fullness? Start being soaked and yielded to the Holy Spirit. I want, I want to continue church. Now, now this is going to make sense. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And you put on the new man. 
which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth which, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. You know what the Lord is saying? Now that you have the Holy Spirit, stop lying, stop stealing, stop doing the things that you're called to do because you are not, you are not, not like normal Gentiles. You are the ambassador, royal priesthood, holy nation, chosen people. I expect you to walk in a standard. Church, kids, youths, opportunities, amities, I challenge you to walk in righteousness. Not just the youths, church. We always think, oh, what about us? What about the way we gossip? What about the way we talk? I love my youth church. You're not going to pick on them. I promise you, they're, they're brilliant kids. We have to lead by example. They look it to me. If I am talking about all this, I love God, I love God, and I'm going down in, in secret, gossiping about my brothers and sisters, you think they don't see that? This is a stern warning and calling to everyone to walk in righteousness. I love how it says, let him who stole steal no longer. And I want to keep going church. <sighs> let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgive you. I explained that verse last week, church. Hey, Janice, can you come up? I explained that verse to you last week. You know why you can't experience forgiveness, church? It's because you're not allowing and walking in, the, in that alignment of Christ. If you are outside the alignment of Christ, you will always... You'll, you'll, never experience, you'll never experience that. Janice is going to read Colossians 3, 1 through 11. I want you to listen. She's got a brilliant, brilliant voice, by the way. Since then, you have, you have been raised with Christ. Amen. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you, will, then you will also appear with him in glory. Yes. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your because earthly nature. Put to death your members, which are on earth. The spirit is not of the earth, but your mind and your body is part of the earth. Put to death everything that is of earth. Keep going, Janet. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immort immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Amen. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things such as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your wow. lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge. Catch the church, which is renewed in what? Knowledge. Keep going, Janice. In the image of its creator. In the image of his creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Amen. Thank you, Janice. Christ, who is all in all. Let's stand up, church. I want you to forever remember this image. And where did you get this, Pastor? Where do you get this from? It's from 1 Thessalonians 5.23. I want you to understand I'm getting my rooting from the Word of God. Church, I want us to practice beating our body. Next time you get angry, say, God, I can do this. Next time you get irritated, Next time somebody snubs your pride, it's okay. God is approved of me. I don't need your approval. Sometimes our pastors say things to correct us. Sometimes our elders say things to correct us. Don't let, get, don't let pride get in the way.
Man, you guys should come for these youth meeting Saturdays. Yesterday, Cheyenne gave a powerful word. I'm telling you, church, God is bringing revelations to our kids. You know when the Bible says your sons and daughters will prophesy? It's not just prophetic words, it's prophecy from the revelation of God's word. Man, we got to be a generation that is righteous in the way we walk, in the way we live, in the way we speak, in the way we behave. I want, I challenge my church that God, what are the areas that I need to correct that I'm not walking and manifesting your righteousness? As we submit before the word church, as they are going to sing and they're going to worship the Lord church, I mean it. We can sing every Sunday the same words church. I'm fed up of religion church. Can we be real and open before God and say, God, seriously, I am messed up. Nobody's hearing your prayer. I need a lot of help. And the minute you say help, you know what God says? My strength is made perfect in your weakness. If you stand with pride and say, I don't need God. God says, I oppose the proud, but give grace to the humble.